Hi, I'm Greg, lead developer advocate at Hedera Hashgraph, and this is a high level introduction to distributed ledgers. Uh, and the idea is to try and kind of set the scene a little bit around uh, what we feel a DLT is. <clears throat> and it's, it's important to us, um, or to me certainly, uh, to differentiate DLTs from uh, blockchain. Uh, blockchain is often used as a generic term. It was generation one uh, for distributed ledger technologies. Um, but uh, ultimately, blockchain is, uh, in its implementation with a consensus algorithm, a type of distributed ledger technology. Uh, Hedera Hashgraph is another, uh, and there are many more. But essentially, uh, a distributed ledger is a set of replicated, shared, and synchronized data uh, across multiple sites, uh, countries, and so on. Um, and it's, um, there is typically no central administration uh, or centralized data storage, um, although you could argue maybe that a private uh, digi uh, distributed ledger has some, some level of central administration. Um, but it's uh, a distributed uh, set, of, uh, set of computers uh, that take part in, um, in various activities. They have a, a typically a, a number of properties, uh, one of uh, immutability, uh, meaning that once transactions uh, exist within their ledger, they can't be changed by anybody. Um, we'll talk about immu immutability in the context of Hedera Hashgraph uh, later on. Um, transparent, um, all of the members in the network have access to the information which is recorded in the ledger. Uh, anonymous, um, whereby uh, the, the identity of members uh, is uh, anonymous or pseudo-anonymous. Anonymous. Um, they enable trust, uh, which um, between uh, parties that may not necessarily trust each other, uh, and it, uh, it does, or they can in, in many, uh, many respects, remove third-party validations. We talk about disintermediation, uh, which is kind of the re removal of the middlemen uh, by having a, uh, a central um, or a, a distributed ledger that takes part of, of uh, takes care of uh, that uh, validation. Um, there is an element of a single source, source of truth. Uh, all the members in the network have the same copy of the ledger. Um, if that weren't the case, then obviously the, the value of the ledger itself becomes uh, debatable. Um, and it should be possible to remain anonymous uh, on the ledger. Uh, certainly one of the attractions for, for many is the, the ability to, to deal anonymous, anonymously, or something like that, um, on, the, on the ledger. And then finally, uh, most, of the le most ledgers are decentralized uh, to a smaller or greater degree. And certainly within Hedera Hashgraph, we uh, try to um, distinguish uh, geographical decentralization, meaning that uh, the nodes of the DLT are located in various geographies, and that's one set of, ge of uh, decentralization. Um, and then the decentralization of governance, uh, which is the, um, the, the, which are the people, uh, or the which is the entity that kind of runs and operates the network on, on behalf of its users. Um, but again, we'll, we'll go into uh, more detail on, on those. So what is centralization? Uh, I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with the, the notion of uh, large organizations uh, attracting many users, um, and they essentially uh, own and manage the entire network. Um, they're you know, free to do virtually anything they want with their network. Um, they keep information uh, for themselves. Um, and uh, there is a, a centralized manner by which you, you can access this information. Even if there are distributed um, sort of access points, if you want, or servers around the world, uh, ultimately um, the, the, the access is controlled by, by those entities. So that's a, a notion of centralization. In decentralization, uh, nobody is uh, essentially uh, managing the, the network or no single party, meaning no, no one person uh, arguably has, has access or has control over the network. Um, and there is a, a notion there of peer-to-peer of -peer whereby all of the, the nodes exchange information with each other uh, in order to keep the, the ledger uh, up to date. 
Um, and if one of those nodes were to disappear uh, from the network, then the others are there to, uh, to take its place or at least to offer the same information that that particular node uh, was holding because they all hold exactly the same data. So, um, if we look at different uh, types of uh, DLT networks uh, that, that exist, we have permission networks. Um, so, a permission network is one which is typically owned by um, a number of people who uh, want to retain a level of control over uh, who is able to join the network uh, as a node. Um, and often, uh, those permission networks are also uh, implemented in kind of private uh, institutions um, where the, uh, the properties of the ledger uh, are used uh, to ensure maybe sanctity of data within a particular organization or immutability of that data. Uh, but the, the, the necessity for that data to be visible to the public um, is, is, isn't there. So uh, typically, uh, a private ledger uh, would be implemented in a permissioned uh, setting here. Nobody can just attach their computer to the network. Uh, it's kind of locked into its own island. <clears throat> so examples of, uh, of, of these permission networks are Swells, uh, which is the, um, the kind of the private permission deployment of the hash graph algorithm. Uh, Hyperledger is, is another one. Uh, and there are many more, but um, there's only space for so many examples. Um, a permissionless network is, uh, is one where anyone is uh, arguably free to uh, stand up a computer, a node, some hardware, um, attach it to the network and start participating in, um, in consensus or mining or any of those operations. Um, and there is no, um, you know, there's no entry criteria, typically, uh, you, can, uh, you can do so at your own will. Um, so examples of those, uh, and those are typically how public ledgers are deployed. Uh, and examples of those are uh, well-known Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, Hedera eventually. Uh, so Hedera in the early days will be a public uh, permissioned network whereby we, uh, we will enable um, nodes operated by council members to join the network. Uh, but once um, the network itself is established or over time, um, then it will become permissionless and anyone will be able to stand up a node and join the network. That's certainly the intention long term. So um, there is also much talk about uh, blockchain and DAGs, directed acyclic graphs. So let's look at those in, in a little bit more detail. Um, blockchain is a data structure which uh, contains blocks uh, which are linked to each other via hashes. And the idea there is that the, the hash of the previous block um, essentially means that if you were to modify in, this, in, in the, the little picture here, uh, block number one, uh, you would be able to identify that that was uh, tampered with because the hashes will no longer uh, correspond to uh, the, the hash that's held in block zero. Um, so that essentially um, ensures the data that's stored in each of those blocks becomes immutable. Um, it, it would take uh, an awfully high amount of computing power uh, to be able to rebuild the entire blockchain uh, after modifying a, a block. Um, you know, and the further back in history that block is, the harder it becomes and therefore the, those data structures are considered uh, immutable. Um, and nodes uh, in blockchain typically hold uh, the entire history of transactions from, uh, from the very beginning, uh, which is known as the genesis block, the very first block in the, um, in the blockchain. Uh, so Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example, use, um, use blockchain. Uh, in order to uh, to store their uh, their transaction history, a direct acyclic graph, on the other hand, uh, is a data structure that uh, grows only in one direction. Um, it's composed of uh, vertices and edges, so these are kind of the, the boxes and the arrows, if you want. Um, and it's impossible for the the graph to kind of loop back on itself. That's the notion of the the, the directed acyclic. 
um, it can't cycle back on itself. Um, but it's not a blockchain. Uh, it's, uh, it's a different way of storing data, um, which has its own properties. Um, and various um, implementations of directed acyclic graphs exist. Uh, Git, for one, uh, uses a, a directed acyclic graph, although it's not a, a, a sort of a distributed ledger per se, uh, not in the, in the sense of, um, of the, the, the context that we're in here. Uh, Hedera uses one um, with, uh, or rather the hash graph algorithm in Hedera uses a DAG, and so does IOTA with its tangle. And there are uh, plenty others. So um, once we uh, have um, a, a data structure, uh, which is either a blockchain or um, a directed acyclic graph in order to store information, uh, we also need uh, a consensus algorithm. And the consensus algorithm um, is the algorithm that enables uh, a number of nodes to come to an agreement on uh, what, uh, what data goes into the network or how data that goes into the network should be stored uh, either on the blockchain or in the, uh, in the graph. There are many different types and families of consensus algorithms. Um, the early ones um, were uh, proof of work, uh, and this is how uh, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum are implemented. Um, those have their drawbacks. Um, so uh, new ones have been invented since, uh, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. There are probably tens uh, of, of different consensus algorithms out there. Uh, proof of stake, delegated proof of stake, and, and hash graph are um, kind of evolutions, if we want, or, or, or new, new ways of coming to consensus um, as distinct from proof of work. So what does proof of work do, or, or what does yeah, what does proof of work do? Um, there's a process whereby uh, blocks uh, are mined by uh, by node operators, um, and they compete to add a block onto the blockchain. Uh, that competition uh, requires uh, calculation, uh, which in uh, um, in Bitcoin becomes uh, sort of increasingly complex. Um, and, and essentially, uh, the miners uh, are the only people on the on the blockchain or in in the in this particular DLT uh, using proof of work. Uh, the miners are the only ones contributing to consensus. Uh, if you're not mining, you're not contributing to to consensus. Um, and the uh, ever increasing complexity of the competition, if you want. Uh, means that the uh, computing power required and power uh, required to run uh, a proof of work uh, algorithm is is forever increasing and bitcoin is is a well known <laughs> example um, proof of stake uh, is an evolution that kind of tries to uh, to make it uh, less um, less expensive maybe uh, in terms of electricity and, and energy um, to um, to come to consensus um, and uh, in proof of stake um, the uh, the wealth uh, in form of a platform coin or something um, is used to kind of prove that uh, a forger uh, who is able to mint or forge a block uh, has the uh, the necessary um, sort of uh, uh, I don't want to use the, the term uh, reputation, uh, but the higher the stake, uh, the, the greater the chance of, uh, of being able to, uh, to mint or forge the next block. Um, more specifically here around proof of stake is the fact that if you are found to be uh, malicious uh, and you're validating fraudulent transactions, uh, you lose your stake. So there is a risk. Uh, so the, the incentive there, I guess, uh, for the, the miners or the, the forgers uh, is not to uh, validate fraudulent transactions, else they stand to lose their stake. And NEO is, is an example of a proof of stake uh, based DLT. Delegated proof of stake is an evolution of proof of stake um, where the members of the network vote to select uh, who they want uh, to validate transactions. Um, so um, those with the highest uh, amount of votes 
uh, will uh, will earn the right to essentially um, validate transactions and put them onto the blockchain or uh, the the DAG, uh, whichever storage is used to um, uh, in association with the uh, the consensus mechanism here. So it's fairly similar to proof of stake, um, but the um, the network has the ability to essentially elect um, somebody or delegates their, their voting to somebody else. Um, and there, there are some, uh, some pros and cons, of course, as with any uh, consensus algorithm. Hashgraph um, is uh, somewhat different. Um, there are no miners, there are no forgers. Um, it's highly efficient, and we'll, we'll go into more detail on the algorithm itself later on. Uh, more specifically here, um, every node uh, is able to contribute to consensus, uh, and that will be based on um, proxy staking, which we'll, we'll, we'll cover later on. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's fundamentally different to uh, all to, uh, previously known uh, consensus algorithms. Uh, and I guess that uh, it's reason, or this is probably the reason you're here, uh, amongst others. So um, those algorithms are, are different ways uh, in which um, a DLT can uh, validate and order transactions into a ledger. Um, there are many, many more than, than those that I've uh, explained here. There's proof of authority, proof of reputation, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and the algorithm itself has um, a, sort of a, a significant impact on um, all areas that, that we're all interested in, uh, such as centralization, throughput, fairness, and so on and so forth. Um, so as I said, they all come with uh, kind of pros and cons uh, to a smaller, greater extent. Um, but um, yeah, they're, uh, they're there, um, and uh, they generally do a reasonably good job. So um, one of the things that I kind of wanted to uh, um, to leave you with, um, and, and it, it's one that kind of irritates me a little bit, I guess. Um, so I'm taking the opportunity here to uh, evangelize to a certain extent. Um, it's that many people compare blockchain to DAGs. Uh, many people put DAGs and blockchains into two different families. Um, my argument is blockchain or DAG alone does not make a DLT, uh, and consensus alone doesn't make a DLT. You need a combination of a way of storing things, a blockchain or a DAG, with a consensus algorithm to come to a distributed ledger. Um, so um, just comparing blockchain against DAG is kind of missing <coughs> the elephant in the room to a certain extent. Uh, it's often a consensus algorithm, which is the most significant uh, element of the decentralization governance and so on and so forth of a given distributed ledger, not whether it's blockchain or DAG. Uh, 